won't have to come. Won't have to come at all. Sir, come and share with the gospel with you. You're still saving today. Praise the name of Jesus. How you doing, sir? God bless you, brother. Neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dwelt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Like as the father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knows our frame passes over it, and how and it is gone and the place thereof shall know it no more but the mercy of the lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto the children's children to such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them the lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruleth over all bless the lord ye his angels that excel in strength that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of the word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Amen. So, so we're here to share that with you. And it's powerfully that you, you hear, that you have ears to hear. The Bible says, if you have ears, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. So I pray that you have ears to hear today. You know, salvation is a, a salvation of your soul is the most important thing that you can receive on earth. Not your car, not your house, not money. The most important thing is your soul. And so true love wants to share with you a, a, a love for your soul. You know, we, we, we love your soul. Not play the hypocrite like I did about five years ago. I'm currently years old the lord saved me when i was about 16 17 years old but don't play the hypocrite that i did say god forgive me my sins god forgive me but continue to practice your sin that is not showing or bearing the fruit of genuine repentance the prophet isaiah warned about those he says these people honor me these people honor me with, with their mouths they honor me with their mouth. They say hallelujah. They say praise the Lord, but their hearts are far from me. Mm -hmm. And today, if you are a professing believer, you must check your heart and be sure that you're not a hypocrite asking God for forgiveness just so that you continue practicing your sin. The Bible warns about a hypocrite. And today we're out here to share with you the good news gospel. What is the gospel? What did Jesus do over two years ago? Prophesied by the prophets to come to die on the cross for the forgiveness of the sins of those who believe in him. First Corinthians. Glory of God. Today, if you're hearing my voice right now, you're hardening your heart because you that's because you hate God and you're resisting the good news. Jesus had to die on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. What is sin? If you've lied. If you looked at a woman with lust, if you're watching pornography, you're in sin. If you're putting anything before God, an idol, you're an idolater, and God commands you to repent of your sin. Today, many people come up with a lot of uh, philosophies and traditions of man to resist the good news of the gospel. Everyone knows that God exists. 
everyone knows that when you do something wrong, your conscience bears witness to that wrong. But what happens is today, many people practice sin so much that their consciousness, be that their conscience becomes seared to the point where their heart becomes hardened toward God. I was a hypocrite. I claimed to be a Christian. I went to church almost every Sunday. I even got baptized water, but that did not save me. I was still living in sin. I was still living in rebellion to God. And your only hope today is to repent and put your full faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the death, burial, you and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is what our faith and hope lies on. The historical event. This is historically, prophetically, scientifically proven that the Lord Jesus Christ, he died, buried, and he was resurrected. This is a historical event, the greatest event ever in history, because this is the event that your life lies on. How you view Jesus, that is what your life lies on. And if you reject the gospel of Jesus Christ, you won't be a friend of God. You're an enemy of God. And right now, if you're living in sin, God sees you as his enemy. A lot of people conjure up a, well, who they think God is. That they're God, they, they conjure up an idolatrous thought in their minds and say, my God accepts this, my God accepts that. And you might be right, your God does accept that, but it is not the one true and living God. What you have done is you have created an idol in your mind of a God who accepts sin. Why? Because you don't want to repent of your sin. Because you love your sin. You love to fornicate, love to have sex outside of marriage. You love to cheat on your taxes. You love to steal things that don't belong to you. You love the sin. That's why you haven't repented. That's why you rejected the gospel. Yet it's today, today, there is hope in the gospel that Christ, if you agree with Christ, if you agree with God that you are a sinner and humble yourself. The Bible says that God resists the proud and he gives grace to those who are humble. So right now, if you hear my voice and you're proud in your heart saying, no, I don't need that, God is going to resist you. But if you're humble, you agree with God that you are a sinner and that you need his grace and that you need his mercy, God is willing to forgive you. God is not going to accept the works. The only thing that God is going to accept is the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, if you are not covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, I warn you that there is a terrifying judgment waiting for you upon your death. And you don't know when you're going to die. You don't know when you're going to die. And many of you might be hearing my voice now and hardening in your heart. That's because you hate God. That's because you hate God. But God, in His grace and in His mercy, He showed us His love by sending us the Lord Jesus Christ. Not the God of the Quran, not the not, not the God who, who who accepts sin, but the one and true holy God who all of us must stand before one day. And, and this is an interesting thing. The Bible says that every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. But here's the thing. Do you want to stand before God in judgment and Him causing you to bow and, 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 and you're standing in judgment before Him without accepting His Son Jesus Christ? Or today, do you want to humble yourself, bow before the Lord in humility and receive His grace? Receive the grace of God through the God through the Jesus Christ. So on the day of judgment, you won't be crying out to God, bowing before Him, confessing Him in a way on your, on your way to hell. Bow right now. Humble yourself right now before God. Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father now. Repent of your sin. Put your faith in Christ so that you can be secure for your eternity. So that you can be in the right relationship with God. And a lot of people say that they know God. But the Bible says he who does not have uh, the Son does not have the Father. So if you're saying that you know God but you have not put your faith in the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, you do not know God. You do not know the God of Scripture. You do not know the God of the Bible.